strongest strongest team in the series so far. Yeah. I'll leave that to you. Really, you know, it's um said at the start we're we're managing players' workload from a Super Rugby campaign, uh, looking at building our our game the way we want it to be, and I guess growing combinations. So there's a little bit of that. There's also a little bit of you know management with players who have. Um, who've been out for a little while, hence, you know, the likes of a Brody Retallick, you know, he had a big game last week, so it's a chance to use him differently. We feel a bit the same with, with Bodie, he's taking a couple of big head knocks, so there's a chance to, to move a few people around, but um, but again, really, really happy with the combos we've got. How exciting to have Artie and Anton back in the group? Yeah, delighted, you know, it's, um, uh, Artie's has taken, it's just been a niggly knee, it's taken a little bit longer than we expected but um, it was good to be able to give him an extra week last week and jumping out of the skin and the same with Anton, you know, we, were, we, we thought that there was a chance for maybe him being last week but it's uh, again he's got another week solid under his belt. Ian, the, um, according to some, the sky seems to have fallen in around the breakdown this week. What, what's been the message and what, how have you trained around that this week? Oh, we had to, uh, to improve a number of aspects from last week, there's no doubt about that. And, um, you know, often the breakdown looks like you get exposed from a, a physical side, but some of it's a, a, a strategy side where, you know, we're, st we're still trying to get used to where we're going to make the contact point and if it surprises people then often we get a bit short, but that's all part of us growing our game. So. Overall, you know, we, we got some nice lessons there and, you know, we, we won lots of turnovers as well. So they, it went both ways. But, but I think the main focus is probably on our ball carrier more than anything. And, and often as people get to know what we want and it becomes clearer, their instincts take over. Whereas if you get hesitant in that space and, and the ball carrier doesn't do his job, then the next role's quite hard. Does the fact that a lot of the Fijians play in Europe have anything to do how they played the program. And, and, and therefore the fact you guys haven't really played a European team since the World Cup, does that come into the reckoning as well? Yeah, look, I, I, there's probably a little bit of that. I think um, there's certainly, um, they were very low at the breakdown last week. And, and uh, you know, there was a lot of, you know, we put a lot of questions um, about how they could be that low and holding their weight, but it's it's something that we've just got to make sure that we're we're in there quick and, and we dominate that that territory. But hey, it's a game that um, the breakdowns like that every week. You know, it's not like it's uh, it's new, and um, and and I felt we were still able to get the flow of ball when we really wanted it to. But there was a, clearly a couple of situations that we were short. And did you want two player buy? Um, out there at all? Is he carrying a niggle or something? No, no, he had a niggle at the start. Um, 21 years old, had a massive uh, Super Rugby campaign. Um, probably played more than than even what the Chiefs would have wanted. You know, with their shortage of locks. So, um, and so this campaign is really about getting his Achilles mm. right. He, he has come right this week, mm. but it's just um, missed his opportunity. Severi switching to the left wing. What are you looking from him to offer on that style? Uh, same as what he did on the right wing. You know, he's just energetic. He's busy at the moment, um, and he has played quite a bit of left wing before. And so, just a chance to have a look at him on that space. But um, I think I said last week I've been been impressed with him. You know, I think he's 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 chasing well. He's energetic. He's he's looking for touches and. Uh, just a chance for him to, um, to I guess, show his wares on the other side. Did you think about putting Rico on the left wing this week? Yeah, think about a lot of things. And and again, uh, we're quite keen for, for Seba to have a chance here. How did the contest at 10 shaping up and see? Um, both and Richie both had one crack and, and Richie gets a nod this week. Oh, I think it's shaping up just nicely. You know, it's... Um, it's not like we're trying to design a big boxing match one against the other. We're trying to grow um, our teens in terms of understanding how we play. I think, you know, I'd, I'd give Richie the points based on the on the first two games. And but to be fair, we always expected that. You know, I think that um, 
Um, you know, I thought Bodie was. Uh, yeah, he made a lot of really good decisions. I thought his instincts were probably just a fraction off, and that's why we're keen to keep playing him and keep get him more and more time. But he showed some. I was really impressed with a lot of his game management in that game, and, and to me, it's it's uh, he's not far off where we where we need him to be. But um, took a couple of pretty big head knocks, face knocks, and I thought it just maybe dampened his his desire to go to the line quite as hard as what what, it, what you know he can. And so this is a chance for him to have a little bit of a breather in that space, but come on and show us in that second half. Another new pairing in the midfield. What do you want to see from these two, but also how good <coughs> is it to get a look at pretty much everyone for the rest of the season? Yeah, look, it, it is good. It's been, it's, it's that um, awkward balance of giving, having a look at all the different combinations, but also growing what we want to do. So, um, you know, I think it's good for David to have another run. I was, I was impressed with him last week. His composure, his decision making. Um, clearly, um, Anton's had um, had an injury that's kept him out, so it's important to get him back in. So it's a was a reasonably simple selection for us this week in many ways, and. Um, again, if you look at the combinations, the exciting thing is, is you know, everyone was going to focus on what the number one one is, but we're quite pleased that Quinn's come in and, and played really, really well at 12, um, and also really pleased with the progress of, of Rico to date. So um, it's given us some nice uh, options looking forward. We'll talk about the breakdown, obviously, but is it good to mm -hmm. have? A, a bit of a touch-up like that early in the season, rather than late in the season? Um, yeah, look, I, it's, it's, I think I said it's what we wanted, and we wanted a tough physical game, and, and we, we've probably, we were probably a little bit less surprised than many others about what was coming, and um, so is it, is it good to get reminded? Yes, it is. And, um, and the good thing is that that's going to be no different to what we're going to get for, I guess in the remaining of the test matches we've got, it's not just a Northern Hemisphere thing. It's and it's something that we're pretty good at doing normally. And and in large parts of that game, we actually did do pretty well, and we showed that when we got it right, that that uh, we could put a lot of points on them. So it's just a matter of being more consistent through the 80 minutes. You mentioned the ball carrier before, but are you sort of looking at the guys that are behind the ball carrier doing a bit better this week? Oh, we're always looking for improvement everywhere, um, but yeah, part of the thing is to diagnose what the one thing, if you move the most, is going to get the biggest bang for your buck, and we think it's the ball carrier. Is there a temptation to play Hardy at eight, considering you might have Sam back, obviously at seven later on, um, or you know you obviously want him to have some time at uh, seven now? Yep. Yeah. Well, there's a temptation. The answer is, yeah, we looked at all those options, but. Um, you know, at the moment, when we say um, Sam's going to be back, Sam could be out for a, still a significant amount of test matches. So we've got to prepare for the here and now. And um, and we've said Artie's a, clearly an eight for us, but he's also a seven. So this is a chance to get him back into the seven role he, and um, get his instincts back into that space. Talk, talking of Sam, do you actually have any update or any better idea when he might be thinking about it? No, not really. He, what I do know is he's tracking really, really well. And I think at the time we we put a sort of a, a six month type towards the end of September. And so that's still looking on track. But what that, what that means in terms of his return for us is we're not really going to know till closer to that time, really. So, you know, at the moment, you know, I, I can't see him being around for the rugby championship. You know, he, and if he is available at the end, then there's probably a, a chance we'll put him into NPC for a game or two. Um, but it's round about that sort of mid to late September period. How much notice have you taken of the Wallaby series and also a game <coughs> like today between the Lions and South Africa A? Yeah. A lot of notice. What are you seeing? Um, oh, I'm seeing that over in Australia, it's a really competitive series, isn't it? You know, and seeing a team that um, one team played a lot of rugby and a lot of phases, and um, and if you don't get every phase right, you get punished. And so there's very much a, 
a theme there, isn't it, where teams are back in their defence and their ability to, to look for weakness in support systems and go for it. So, uh, But it's been a, pr a pretty tough series over the Aussie-French one. And and the South African one, well, I, I guess it's um, that, that series is always going to be tough, isn't it? But uh, again, you've got a you got one team that's making making a lot of passes and, and making 15 to, to 20 line breaks, and another team only beats about four defenders and makes two line breaks, and they win the game. And so you've got a very much a carry conservative type game plan versus a expansive one, and that's that's the balance nowadays. It's how much do you play? And and how much do you go very very conservative? And it's not necessarily northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere. No, I don't think it is. I think it's a balance that we're all playing around trying to get the right the right mix. And it's um, it's fun trying to get it right. Do the new rules or rule trials coming in for the? Do they come in for this one? Ah, uh, yep, first of August. Um, how much do they come in? Yep, very much so. You know, like the, you know, I think particularly the, um, I think the latching and not going to ground where the support player can't, um, you know, if you latch onto the ball carrier and you end up going to ground, then well, that's losing your feet, like like it is in a normal ruck situation. I think that's going to be really intriguing how it sort of depowers that collision area a little bit. So how teams manage with that is going to be. Interesting, the, the goal line dropout. Well, it is what it is. We've had it in Super Super Rugby. I think the 50-22 will be the interesting one from a a tactical side. About you know, team, it's, it's obviously forcing teams and encouraging teams to to have more defenders in the backfield covering that, which lends itself to opening space. So, you know, some of the systems that we're trying to get going now are with an eye to the future with that. But it it does expose you if they haven't got players in the backfield. And um, so, but all interesting times. Sounds like the Wallabies who are based in Sydney won't go back to Sydney now because of COVID. <coughs> COVID in South Africa affecting that series. <coughs> Did last year teach you just to take each day as it comes and each game <laughs> as it comes? Very much so. You know, we're very much into a treasure of the moment now, and it's um, and that's all we can do. But. Um, you just you, we're watching around and seeing what's happening, but as far as we're concerned, things are still pretty much locked in place. And but the old adapt and adjust theory is still out there, isn't it? A bit of rain around on uh, game night is that going to change things? Do you think? Um, make it very wet, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be fair, when, when you if, if um, at this time of year, whether it's raining or whether it's not raining, you get the dew anyway, and so. You know, largely the balls are a little bit slippery, and um, so will it make significant change to what we're trying to do? Not really. Uh, I mean, but what it does do is it just it ramps up a little bit of the the, the you, you change your, your portion of your kick pass run type ratio, don't you? So that's something that we trust the boys out there to do. What do you need to see as a sort of pass back? level if you like um, to be satisfied after the series going into the first Bledisloe? Oh we've just got to get um, you know clearly we we've we, we want to be we want to improve like was discussed earlier like the how, how we carry the ball and, and how we recycle the ball is going to be important but I don't want to get the, the danger with that is we don't want to get into a purely a retain, retaining the ball mode, we still want to attack. And so it's getting that little bit of a balance and not going into our shells and um, and over committing, but it's still making really good accurate decisions in that space. I, I'd love to see a continuation of of what we're doing w w through our forwards and our set piece, because I reckon that's going pretty good at the moment in many aspects. And, and um, you know, perhaps a, a a uh, slight improvement with some of our running lines, particularly in the counter-attack stuff. I just felt we got a little bit lateral. Looks like Hamilton will have the best crowd of the season so far. <laughs> great. <laughs> no, look, it's a... Here I am saying it's a great rugby ground. And, um, you know, we haven't, we haven't played here for a little while. You know, we had the Tongan game and... Um, so test matches here aren't, aren't every year, and, and it's a it, it's a great service, a great occasion for us to be playing here, and it, 
and for us it's a pretty significant test match you know like we've um, the nice thing is that it seems everyone's on alert now it's not only us that know the Fijians are quite good but everyone else is thinking that so it's added a bit of spice to the test. How much confidence will Hardy's return give everyone else after last week? What do you mean after last week? Well, just with the breakdown, the physicality, he's a physical player. Yep. A lot. yep, yep. I think, um, well, I don't think he's going to grow our confidence in, in that area specifically. I don't think um, we'd lost any confidence in that space, but um, it's good having him back. He's a leader in our team. He's, a, um, he's certainly very excited about, about coming out again. And, um, and the fact that it's a He's got a, it's a number game that he's, it's pretty significant, it's going to be even more meaningful.